Right, um, well, we're moving into spring now. The fish are gonna be moving about all different depths in the water. It's just a case of finding where they are on the day. Today, this is a really deep lake out. We've got a line out there at 13 meters. It's 13, 14 foot deep. So they probably don't wanna be in there on a still warm day like it is today. To give ourselves an option of some shallower water, we've got a line on a top six. It's still seven foot. It's a bit deep again, but it's, it's half the depth of the other line. So we've got somewhere to play with. The last place um, for some shallower water is your edge. And it's lovely, it's about two and a half foot. But again, the fish don't want to move so close to the bank. It's, they're a bit funny at this time of year. So a final option to get in the same depth is, is a feeder out to the island. It's perfect out there. And they're away from your disturbance. So it's always going to be another good line. So, so on these sort of venues, it's always worth setting up for various different depths, just finding where they are. Once you've found the sort of depth you want to be in, where the fish are happy, well, it's lift off to be honest, because they are willing to have a bit of a feed now. So you're in for a good day. Well, moving on to bait um, in the springtime, the, the fish have had enough of your, your maggots and your bread and stuff you fed all winter. They're looking for a bit of protein now the water's warming up. It's the first main feed they've had for a long while. Uh, so it's baits like pellets, meat, all things that are high in protein. You're not going mad with feeding still. They're, they're still not woken fully up, but, but you can, they want something that's gonna feed them now. Today we're faced with real deep water out, um, which rules out fishing meat because it sinks so slow. So it's a pellet approach out there. Again, with it being cold, I don't really want to be feeding hard pellets. And the, the problem again in the deep water is the noise of them is going to bring the fish off bottom and it's not warm enough to fish shallow properly yet. So I've been fishing micros, but, but to combat the depth, I've just been feeding, I fed a good ball to start with, and then it's just toss spotting tiny little nuggets of it. In addition to this, I've been feeding a bit of corn out there, again, just because it's so heavy and keeps the fish down. In the sh shallower water, meat is absolutely brilliant. Carp love it, and F1s and bream and everything once it starts warming up. Again, only been feeding little 10, 15 pieces, quite regularly though, just to draw the fish in. When I fish meat, I would always feed some hemp at the start, just a palmful. It's just a base for the, for the meat to fall over. In the edges, you haven't got to worry about how fast your bait sinks, but micros are a brilliant attractor. Again, with a bit of corn, nice big two bits of corn on the hook as a standout. Some people use ground bait, but it's still a bit too cold for that in my eyes. So the pellets are the safer option. You can just put a few in, and as the day progresses, if they do have a real feed, you can start putting quite a bit of bait in. A big carp or a hoover, a mouthful of those up easy. Right, rig wise for now it's coming into spring, the fish are definitely starting to fight a little bit more. You've got to balance yourself to that. Today we're mainly fishing for carp and it's deep water. You can always get away with a bit heavier gear in deep water, they're just a bit more confident. First of all, the rig for, well you can see, mega depth out there. A round bodied, it's a gram, wire stem, nice and stable. Um, running all the way down here, about a million miles away. We're at an Olivet and just two simple droppers. A little tip for deep water with an Olivet, leave yourself a few shot beneath it. It acts as a boom to stop your rig tangling as you lay it in. Line-wise, it's 020 on all my rigs today. I've got an 015 bottom on. The 020 is just nice and thick, it allows it, keeps it nice and stiff as you lay it in. And I can always step up my hook lengths a little bit if it's really good. Um, elastic wise, I've got a 12 to 14 slick in here. Like I say, the, the carp I'm fishing for, in shallow water, I'd probably fish to 10 to 12, but you need to set the hook a little bit in that deep water, so that's perfect. Moving on to my meat line in seven foot of water. Meat is a really slow sinking bait, so you want to try and fish as light a rig as you can, conditions and depth allowing. Um, because it's quite it's deep, I'm fishing a, a 4x14s today. Nice thick top, two mil bristle. 
it's carbon so I can follow it through the water, the meat through the water. In, again, in shallow water I'd probably have strung out shot but I want to be in control of it so I've got a bulk, just a bulk of number 10s and two number 10 droppers. It just, if you, as I've shown you in videos before, you hold your float with a carbon stem, you can really help slow the bait fall down, which is ideal for the meat. And finally, my edge rig. Again, 020. I've got an 018 bottom on here, because if they come down the edge, they're big fish that are wanting to feed. There's a bit of color in the water, I don't think it matters. Elastic to that is a 14 to 16 slip. Just stepped up a bit. They're big 10 pounders in here if you catch them in the edge. Rig wise, big, nice stumpy float, thick top bristle, and it's just a simple bulk six inches from the hook. Keeps everything stable in shallow water. Yeah, it's all just about keeping your rig balanced to the depth of the water you're in. The, the deeper the water, the bigger the float, so you're in control of what's happening. You, you can't fish a, a really light float in deep water because you'll just be fair, waiting forever for it to actually cock. Um, just balance your, tack, your uh, floats as you come into shallower water step down because a lighter float is going to get you more bites. Slightly different in the edge, you want a heavy rig just to hold the rig still when the big fish come in. But just match your floats to what you're actually trying to achieve. Right, we've caught plenty of fish today. Um, something I just want to touch on is uh, a long landing net handle. It's essential when you're fishing deeper water like this. Um, with a top, because it's a top four deep, they're going to be coming out a lot long further away from you. Um, so you just need to be able to reach them, otherwise you're going to be playing them for ages and trying to get them back. It's all about being efficient to do it. The same would apply with a long distance rod of the 12, 13 foot, because they're just going to pop up a lot further away from you. The other thing I always do, especially with a longer net like today, is a roller behind me. It just makes everything lovely and smooth it's there you're out net a fish straight back on it and your net's there ready for next time really really simple but it speeds you up no end today's been a, a perfect example of a early spring day finally the sun has started to show its face and it's been a nightmare for seeing my float at times um, one item I'd never be without for my fishing all through the spring and summer is a good pair of sunglasses, polarised ones. Um, not only are you going to see your float a hell of a lot easier, I'll just put them on because and model them. Um, the fish are now starting to come up and get in the warmer layers of water. It's, it's just the quickest to warm up and they want to warm up after the winter. So you're soon going to be in dobbing territory. And, you just can't do it properly without a good pair of sunglasses because you won't see half the fish. Yeah, so I, I would always recommend having a pair in uh, in your bait bag or wherever, somewhere with you. Um, it takes two seconds to get them out and it's going to make life so much easier for you at this time of year.